Hey everybody, welcome back to Photorec.tv. I'm Toby and I've been packing for a Greenland and Iceland workshop and honestly not feeling totally overwhelmed with what I have to finish before I leave. And then I get an email from Topaz announcing that they're releasing a new product that combines their excellent sharpening, denoise, and upscaling products. And I thought, hey, at least my underwear's packed. I'm gonna stop, talk to you all about this new product. I'm actually making this video for three reasons. One, Topaz, Denoise, and Sharpen are regular and important parts of my workflow, and I feel like I don't tell you all that often enough. If you watch my longer Lightroom workshop videos, you probably have gotten the sense that they're an integral part of my workflow. But in my shorter videos, I've only touched on them a little bit, and I'm regularly getting emails from people that are unhappy with their images at the various high ISOs, and I'm like, that looks normal. None of these cameras, even the very expensive ones, are magic at the higher ISOs. And if you want to battle that high ISO without losing detail, Topaz Denoise is great. And if you want crispy detail, Topaz Sharpen is fantastic. And I want to share in this video a quick trick that I makes things using that I think makes using these programs much, much better. We're going to get to that in the demo section. That was all reason number one. The second reason I want to make these videos is with this one program, the barrier to entry now has been significantly lowered. I'm often asked while teaching on workshops, do I need both programs? Which should I buy first? Which should I use in my workflow? Which should I use first in my workflow? And they look kind of complicated. Well, now I've got one program and importantly within that program, an easy to use AI autopilot system that's gonna help you determine step-by-step step what to do to improve your photos and critically the order in which you should do it. And the third reason, with complete transparency, Topaz offers a nice affiliate program. So with each purchase you make, I make a few dollars and honestly, that's income that's important to me. It helps me pay things like my mortgage and my health insurance. But this isn't a sponsored video. And most importantly, and I'm very happy to be able to say this, if you are already an owner of the Image Quality Bundle, this new software is completely free to you. So follow the link, photorec.tv slash topaz to try it out. The software is gonna cost $199, but at launch it's discounted to $159. And I've got a promo code for you, Get Photo AI that you can use to save an additional 15% when you purchase. Now, you are buying this program for life. It'll never go away. This isn't a subscription fee, but there is a subscription to get the updates. So the purchase price gets you a year's worth of updates. All right, so we're gonna get started here in Lightroom. That's what I said, I keep all of my files and it just does such a nice job of organizing the various versions that I might generate as I go into and out of third-party programs like Photoshop, like Topaz. So here I am at ISO 2500, honestly not too bad, but you can see some noise, especially in the background, a little bit impacting the fur of this bear. So I'm gonna right click, edit in, Topaz Photo AI, this little plugin initializer is installed when you install the program. And when you select that, it pops up. The default options suggested by Topaz Photo AI are just fine. All right, let's take a quick tour of the program. Of course, we have our menu across the top. Uh, autopilot settings on with allow auto upscaling. That's part of that gigapixel enlarging software. I don't use that a whole lot, but I do want to leave that on in case it suggests an image needs it. I haven't had one yet that it does, but it might. You also have the option of processor being set to auto or specifically choose whatever you're working on. I would leave it on auto unless you're experiencing some issues. It's been working very, very well for me on a MacBook Pro M1 chip. Now we have, of course, our image here in this big screen and in the top right corner, we've got our little navigator or preview window is another way to call it. And you can click in there and drag around to various parts of your image. And down here, I'm in this split screen view right now where you can grab this and see the before and the after, the left being before and the right being after. Get the dramatic difference of noise, no noise. And then I wanna take a moment and really look hard in the fur of this bear, are we losing detail in this fine detail region? That's always a battle when you're removing noise. Every program is going to mush the detail some. And one of the things that I'm really finding with Topaz is their algorithms do a fantastic job of keeping that original detail. You can also go to the full view and click the little eyeball to see the before 
and click it again to see the after. I do like the split view. It really lets me kind of zoom in and figure out exactly how it's changed as I move that back and forth. Now over here on the right, I mean, it already did stuff to my image. It detected the subject. Down here, it's decided that this image needed a high amount of luminance noise removed. With the little autopilot settings on, you can see that there's only one image quality section that is currently on with that green dot. That is letting you know that autopilot decided that it just needed some noise reduction. And it is set to strong and a strength of 55. If I move it away from there, notice that there's a little green line, again, showing me what the autopilot decided was best for this image. I've been quite happy with what it's suggesting so far in the images that I've processed. Uh, you might want to deviate from this, and you certainly can. I may want to do some sharpening to this image. I want to just pop out that fur just a little bit more, and little eyes just a little bit more. So even though autopilot didn't suggest it, because the bear is pretty sharp, I can turn it on. And it's just a little bit of lens blur that's causing, I think, some of the softness here. And I'm going to leave that on and strength in this area. And also in this option, I have subject only. So it is not trying to sharpen the flies in the background or the blades of grass that are out of focus, which is great because that's how you get artifacts added into your image. And um, I think just a, somewhere in that general vicinity is pretty good. Again, watching for anything funny any funny artifacts. Uh, this program isn't perfect. None of them are. And so there are times where it may be a little more aggressive than you like. And if you're ever going to go to print with one of these images, you want to really take the time to carefully look over and make sure that there isn't anything odd or any artifacts that have appeared. And I'm going to hit Save to Adobe Lightroom Classic. It's going to come back to Lightroom with this new TIFF version. You can batch process. So if you have multiple images and you just want to run them through the autopilot, you can certainly do that and it works quite well. We can do select both of them, hit the C key to compare and zoom in and see very nicely how well it did and whether or not we lost any of that important detail. I think it's done a fantastic job and added in some of that sharpness or brought out some of that sharpness all the way to the edges and really inspect the edges and we have good detail in the fur all the way up those little fuzzy ears. Another image that I want to share with you and process in the Topaz Photo AI is this portrait of Steve in Antarctica from earlier this year. Uh, this was shot at ISO 5000 because this shot was taken at approaching midnight. All right, so this image is loaded up in Topaz Photo AI and three things have happened. It's detected our subject, Steve. It's decided and removed a low amount of noise, and it's recovered one low quality. The algorithm that Topaz Photo AI uses finds the face and makes it a little bit better. The demo I saw from Topaz had a huge family picture, 27 people. It found all 27 faces and made improvements to those faces. You can turn that on or off right there, and you have just a few options, I should say just one, the strength of that in that section. Uh, it has also removed noise as we've seen. This time it's a normal amount with a very low strength. And again, if we move that slider away from there, we see that we have that suggested amount from the AI autopilot. Let's go back to the subject detect. Notice that it got a little bit more of the background behind his nice hat. So let's fix that. We can hit this refine button. We can see that there are three types of subjects that it can look for. Default, when it's not sure what's going on. Portrait, jeez, right there, that did it. That pulled it off, was smart enough now to find the edge of the hat, and we're going to leave all of the other settings as is. You can, of course, adjust the sensitivity and the softness, how, how hard the edge of that mask should be, because that is what it is. It's a mask. So I'm going to click done right up here and we're back into that. And again, mouse over just to make sure. And again, it's just run through those. So I'm very happy with the settings here. Here's the before, the after. It's done a good job, I think, of removing the noise. We look in the areas here. We still have some of the wrinkles and the discoloration on our life vests. Uh, still have good detail in the face but without all of that noise. And so again, I'm happy with these settings, so I'm going to save this back to Lightroom. Now here's the original sitting next to the edited version. 
I want to move to one more image. This one is it's not a fantastic image, but it allows me to share my trick that I think is useful, even as good as that subject detector is within Topaz Photo. It sometimes isn't perfect, and even when it is, this trick will give you a lot more control. So I'll tell you, if we went direct to Topaz Photo, it doesn't do a fantastic job of seeing all of this wing, kind of blending in with the background, and or we have some dark shapes back here that grab its attention and pull it out. So what can you do? Well, Photoshop selection tools are fantastic and an easy intermediate step before you move into Topaz Photo. So I'm gonna to go to Edit In Photoshop. Now I wanna select my bird. Probably one of the easiest these days is use that object selection tool. I'm gonna to click this and I'm gonna come and hold a mouse over my bird for a moment and see if it gets the light up. There it is. It found that bird. I'm gonna click and that puts the little marching ants around my subject. I'm gonna hit the Z key and zoom in and see, did it truly do a good job? Even Photoshop missed part of the back of the bird. I'm gonna hit the L key to get just kind of my straight lasso. There's a lot of ways to do this too, but I'm just gonna hold down shift and draw a quick rough line to select that section it was missing. Tiny little bit of bird armpit right there. And over here, there's a little extra it got. I'm gonna hold down Alt to subtract from the selection and draw around the beak real quick. Now that I have the bird selected, I'm gonna do Command J to put that bird on its own layer sitting above the background. So we hide the background, we have just the bird. We can call it just the bird. And what I like to often do is actually make two copies of that. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the background. So we now have two copies of the bird, two copies of the background. You might say, this seems complicated. Play this back, watch it a few times. It really isn't. All right, what do I wanna do? Well, I wanna remove the noise from the background first and foremost. So with the background copy selected, I'm gonna to go to Filter, Topaz, Topaz Photo. Again, when you install the program, it puts these plugins here and they just work. So it's gonna detect the bird. I don't care. I don't need the bird to be detected. I don't need to do anything to the bird because I have that bird on its own layer. We'll be back in here in a minute on that layer. So I'm just gonna hit refine and I'm just gonna drag the sensitivity to nothing and the softness to nothing and see that it got a few little specks on the chest. Again, I don't care what it does. But I'm gonna let it look at the rest of this image and decide that it needs to remove a high amount of noise. And let's just check in real quick. It's on strong, strength of 66. Looks pretty good to me. If I decided I wanted to bring it up even more, I could. And nothing else to do. I'm gonna save it to Adobe Photoshop. So now, look at that. The noise is, oops, that was way too zoomed in. The noise is gone. And if we wanna see it back, we can turn this copy off. There is the before, here's the after. That's really the main reason why I leave or make an extra copy so that I can see just so quickly how much of a difference. And do you note how much more the bird stands out just by softening and removing noise from the background? We haven't done anything to this bird. Well, you say, wait a second, it went into the noise reduction program, not this bird, because this bird is sitting on its own layer up above. I'll turn those both off. There's the noise reduced bird. There's the original. Here's the untouched bird all on its own layer. I wanna turn both those layers on and I wanna to go to the copy again. With the copies layer selected, filter, topaz, photo. And it loads up. It's gonna detect the subject. In this case, it's the whole thing. It doesn't matter. All of this space around the bird, the dark, that's transparent space that is not gonna get impacted by this program. And it's seeing a medium amount of noise on the bird. So before, after, I think it's done a pretty nice job. Might just move it up a little bit more. Now, I also, I wanna sharpen. Even as noisy as this is, let's push this program a little bit. And we have a little bit of blur, I'm gonna say from motion blur with this guy. And I'm just gonna bring the strength up just a touch, just a scooch. So I'm gonna save this image back to Photoshop. All right, 
Here is now my denoised and sharpened bird. How does it look compared to the original bird? Well, I still have that back here on this copy, just the, the bird original. So let's turn that off. There it is. There's the noise. There's the denoise. Not a dramatic difference, but enough that I think it was worthwhile making that round trip process. And if I'm happy with this, I can flatten the image and return to Lightroom where I'll have one nice image all set to go. A big improvement over the original. There you go. That was a look at the just announced Topaz Photo AI. If you'd like to buy and wish to support my work, you can use the link photorec.tv slash topaz or find the teacher or creator that you like and ask them for their link. It doesn't cost you anything extra. If you appreciated this video, thumbs up are always appreciated by me and consider subscribing along with pressing that little bell so that you'll be notified of future videos. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.